Pete Yost here for the Unbuild It podcast with a word about our sponsor, Huber Engineered Woods. There are really three reasons why I think Huber Engineered Woods stands out, and it's a big part of why they're a sponsor of our Unbuild It podcast. First, they develop systems of products. The products are compatible and integrated. Makes our jobs a lot more easy in the field and when specifying. Second is superior tech support. There are really good website resources that they have developed for the application of their products, but they also have an outstanding uh, 800 number tech team that really knows their stuff. And the last is a really active technical research and development team with whom I've done a lot of work over the years and I have a lot of faith in the information I get from them when I have questions about product performance. So that's it. That's our high performance sponsor. Now onto the podcast. Pete Yost here for the Unbuild It podcast with the steady standbys, Steve Basic, architect, and Jake Bruton, builder. So I went from cohort cohort to steady standby. You like that? I don't seems know if that's like a, seems like backup quarterback, not yeah, quarterback. I guess that, I, did <laughs> I mean it that way? Up or did I, I move it, down? Listen to the tone status. of my voice. It's it's a term of endearment. I I'm steady. I rely upon you. Huh. You you stand by me. I could probably use jerk as a term of endearment yeah. in a nice way. You, well, you I use buckethead no, on a regular basis. Jerk. I walked onto that's a job a, site one day and heard one of my guys go, "You son of a bitch." And I was just like, easy. And he was like, it's a term of endearment. And he knows that. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm not sure if anybody's on the same page here. <laughs> so the topic of this episode is self-terminating, which I want a little bit of a... Uh, like the heads final up. solution self-terminating? This, this podcast will be self-terminating. Oh, okay. So it's in reference to pressure sensitive adhesive tapes. So the, the reason we're talking about this is that we have many systems now that are both WRBs and air barriers where we are using high performance tapes to cover all the joints, vertical and horizontal. And the idea is that in the construction world, you can terminate with some sort of physical attachment, like a termination bar, and that traps the top leading edge and may, means that it can't come loose as water rolls down the WRB. But what about something that's self-terminating, which means you don't need to trap it with a termination bar or some other tape over top of the leading edge. You're relying upon the leading edge to be self-terminating, which means it closes off. It's not weather lapped, and therefore it has to be a self-terminating tape. So we know that pressure sensitive adhesive tapes are ones where the uh, adhesive is activated by pressure. You're applying force. It gets those Complicated polymers all jazzed, they liquefy, and that's how they get better contact with the substrate. But since folks have been using the term self-terminating, it occurred to me, well, how do we know what self-terminating means? And are there tapes that you can run horizontally across a seam where it's not self-terminating, which means you can't rely upon it and you do need to weather lap it with something. And far as I know, there seems to be folks that use the term that know what it means, but not how to quantify, how to separate out a self-terminating tape from a non-self-terminating tape. And I can tell by the, the rapt expressions on your faces that this is just the most compelling topic I well, could ever imagine. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's, yeah, let's start with... Are there any tapes that that you know of that require a smear of something else on the top side or uh, a counter flashing of some sort? Great question. So those would be non-self terminating tapes, in my opinion. Yeah. So like at the head of a window, you would say, oh, I'm going to apply some goop to the top edge of this tape because I'm not real sure it's self terminating. And the answer is, I, you know, I've done a lot of tape testing. Um, it's always been in an application, not, not about the position of the tape in a horizontal joint. So I don't know what kind of extra stresses are placed, um, along that top edge, if any, um, I've never tested a tape for 
the holding power of that top edge. Uh, in fact, we don't have any tests for that. And so that's why I've been talking to the folks at Huber R&D about what do we want to do about this? Because we want to make sure that if people are not using some sort of uh, leading edge coverage, like a goop, um, that you can feather down to the substrate. Um, how do we how do we give people guidance on that? So let's let's talk about why you might use a goopy thing in that in that sort of situation. The fluid applied membranes can be feathered out. They can go to a zero mil thickness or a, a close to zero as they're going to still exist. Yeah. Uh, and so therefore, there's not a ledge, for lack of a better term. Yes. But then water can be held in tension right there and then stay for a period of time. It's literally just like a, a sloping mechanism on on some level, right? Yep. So that's why when we go, okay, well, if we want to know for sure that the words self-terminating applies, then we can say if it's something that can go down to nothing so that there's no lip, there's no ledge, there's no, you know, leading edge to catch, no capture point there, then we have something that's truly self-terminating in the philosophical discussion that we've had so far. And it's interesting because when I was doing some research on the internet, trying to figure out, well, who uses the term and do they know exactly what it means quantitatively? There was a guy up on a roof, a flat roof, um, and he had taken a real high performance sealant and rolled it up the side of a, I guess it might've been a parapet wall. And he said, yeah, uh, the manufacturer says this is self-terminating. He said, you can see the, you know, it's about this thick and then it feathers down to the top and he goes, I'm going to find out whether this is self-terminating or not. So he pulls out a pocket knife and he starts to hack away at the top of it. And he's like digging and it's really hard to, and, you know, because the edge is thin, but it still adhered, it was hard to get the blade under. And after about, I don't know, maybe two minutes, he said, yep, I think it's self-terminating. I can't get it to peel. So, you know, that's kind of where we are. Um, and we know that there are some tapes that are thicker because they have a deeper adhesive base, which means that they can stick better, presumably, but that gives them a, a higher profile as the top leading edge. Um, I think we can call if the moisture hangs there, sort of the dwell time, you know, how long is that water sitting there, if at all? And it occurred to me too, that since we're using self-terminating tapes on roofs, well, if it's not a vertical wall and it's sloped, now the performance of that top edge becomes even more important because dwell the, times increase. The dwell time is going to increase. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I think for the longest time, the folks at Huber R and D were like, yeah, we're really not sure how important this is to sort of figure out, but, um, so is this your way of asking them to do something like forcing them to do something? Well, we had a bike? conversation we about do a podcast so that they can quit dodging me. <laughs> is that what's happening here? I think what's this happening is Peter's is idea. If you didn't read that in. <laughs> to, yeah. yeah. I think the idea is that I finally sort of have, you know, had some, I, I, stick you know i i'm some adhesion with them uh over this topic Gosh. of do we need to define this and admittedly no one knows how to go about determining what's the threshold for yes you need to protect this top edge because you're not going to rely upon it i mean once the wall's built or the or the roof is built this this is your only chance to yeah figure out to make sure it's sticking so here's a, here's a question, and, and since we're talking about Huber, I'm going to talk about zip tape because it's one that we use a lot. When you look at the install instructions on the zip tape, they they talk about weather lapping, like this this vertical leg of tape has to come down and be applied second over the horizontal tape that's underneath of it. So when you're doing the grid, there's yep. a way to do it so that <clears throat> intersections of tapes are weather lapped. Yep. yep. Why the hell does that matter if the tape three inches over where there's nothing down coming over top of it? Like the tape sticks to the tape, according to them. Yes, but the adhesion of the tape to the backer is less aggressive than the tape to the substrate. And that's less uh, the material and more the profile of the material, the physical. Um, no, I think right? it's inherently because... If you have a tape that doesn't have a release paper, 
you, you know, you have to choose a backer that's a bond break, right? So the weather laps at those intersections are important because no matter how well you think it's thickening, it cannot, it cannot um, wet into the bond break the same way it does the substrate. Okay. You're, you're sitting over here looking well, at me cross-eyed. I have like 100 questions that get to even before we get to zip. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Hit me, Matt. Because I want to be there when whoever the genius is that's doing this testing. Because if I take a piece of tape and I put it on the wall, mm -hmm. first of all, what angle is the edge of the tape cut at? Right? Because that's going to make a difference on dwell time. If I cut it at a 30-degree angle or I cut it straight across. Right? And He's builders, not, a builders are joint. not. Yeah. If I just take a piece of tape and tape it to the wall, yep. roll it out. Vertically. And then I cut it. Right. The, the angle of that cut is going to have some type of implication to dwell time. But. Yes or no? No. I, what I'm saying is I hadn't thought of uh, self-termination in terms of overlapping seams because. I'm not saying overlapping seams. I'm saying go right. Just go to that gypsum board wall and put a piece of tape on it. Yeah. And then hose it down. A this lot of that, that water is dependent. The dwell time is dependent. Is that perfectly flat? That cut edge. But when, when will we have the happenstance that you can't weather lap the no, 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 cut you're edge? Not, you're not, no, no, you're not. Back up. It's it's not <laughs> it's not weather lapping. It's not zip tape. Put any piece of tape on that. Put duct tape. We're going to test duct tape. Yeah. I put duct tape on the wall, and Jake mentioned dwell time. I agree. Water's going to come down the wall. It's probably going to find that edge. It's probably going to sit there. Mm -hmm. But the duration of it sitting there is dependent on the angle that that tape is cut in part. That the, that the topmost edge is The topmost edge is cut. Because if, if I cut it at 80 degrees, it's going to shed water. Water is going to find the edge of the tape and shed. It's not going to sit there. If I'm a very good carpenter and I get out my speed square and I cut a perfectly 90 degree angle, which has never been done out on the job site as far as I've seen. Easy. Well, I'm saying I'm getting out a speed square. I'm kidding. <clears throat> there's always going to be some angle to it. Um, there's how do we how do we measure that? There are so many implications to just that angle as far as dwell time. The other thing is is if I put that piece of tape vertically, there's the self terminating edge, but horizontally, I would argue there's a self terminating edge along the horizontal, mm -hmm. right? So having that tape vertically is probably has some different characteristics than if that tape is installed horizontally. Well, so I'm most concerned about the top edge in a horizontal seam. That's that's what this is about to okay. me. Exactly. So the vertical seams that I was just mentioning, let's let's put those aside for a second. The other question that I have is if I roll that tape and you do and or we put that tape on the wall and you test it. Mm-hmm. The duration that that tape is applied to the wall is going to have some level of um, success based on how much time that tape has been on the wall, right? Because zip tape probably gets stronger as time goes on to some point, and then the curve flattens out and it's just adhered. Well, yeah, that, and actually they use the term dwell time as between application and pressurization to when you when it sees a load so and that's put, at least 24 hours if i put that horizontal tape on there and it doesn't see water in the first 24 hours then it's going to have some level of success when that water appears 24 hours later if i put that tape on the wall and it sees water in an hour yes then it's going to hit that edge that edge might curl but it might only curl for the first quarter of an inch. The remaining three and a quarter inches might never have a problem mm -hmm. because once it gets on the wall for 24 hours, the adhesion has increased. Yep. So it's doing these tests that are, it, it, it's really hard in my eye, in, in my mind, to kind of comprehend something that is like the time lapse of when it sees water, the time lapse of the adhesion um, being applied again before it sees water and when it sees water, how long does it see water, right? Yep. Like if I put water on there in, and it's an eyedropper versus a garden hose, yep. the, the reaction is going to be different. So 
honestly, I'm sitting here going, how the hell do you test this? Well, so you've gotten to the heart of the matter, which is we agreed that we would like to figure out if there is a way to separate out self-terminating from non-self-terminating, but no one has any idea what the test is going to well, look let's like. Well, let's you bring up that topic. So I'm in a challenging mood this morning if you can't, if you don't see Oh, that. I can tell. But <laughs> you say self-terminating and non-self-terminating tape. Mm -hmm. I would... I would want to believe any tape that has adhesive is assumed to be self-terminating. And there's, therein lies the problem. Right. So I don't even know who, who made up this term, yeah. where it came from, and why should I care? Because I'm under the assumption if I buy tape that has adhesive side and non-adhesive side, and I apply the adhesive side to a um, <coughs> okayed substrate that the tape manufacturer suggests that is okay, mm -hmm. compatible, then why do I care? It should work. Now, that You're means, willing to say it should work and, and bury <laughs> behind cladding. Well, I mean, it, I, I think there's a level of trust in every building material. No, nah, come on, you can't trust but no, no, verify. No, no. I, un, un, understood, understood. But I'm just saying, I, I'm not going to put saran wrap and call it a weather barrier, right? Because it hasn't been tested there. I'm saying... Um, most things that we put up there and, you know, tape with, if it's in a rain screen, I mean, I get it. There's some concern there. I just don't know how you come to any level of conclusion because if I put, if I simply tape a house, if you said, I'll give you $20 million, we'll build a house, we'll clad it, we'll put tape on all four sides, all four orientations are going to be different in how self-termination tapes. We need him to be involved in the testing. Well, or the argument for... No, this is exactly what we're hoping to do is to, is to try to figure out, like with the wingnut test, what are the factors that are going to be, have the most impact and can we figure out an inexpensive way to right. assess that? Right. So let me give you a quick example. Uh, the frog painter's tape. Yes. You know, it has, Good a, stuff. it has a leading... This is my understanding. I've never actually looked at it underneath a jeweler's loop or something, but... Um, the reason it does such a fine line with the paint is that the actual tape feathers to, to a thinner profile when you get to the edge. And that's what gives you that much crisper line. Okay, if that's the case, then, you know, if we have a really thick tape that has a real high profile, would it be worth or could we even feather that edge or do what you said, which is, um, could there be a way to... Uh, slope the cut edge along the roll so that it doesn't present as much of a ledge. And, and the question is, well, maybe we can do that, but it's going to be really expensive to do that. Yes. Is it worth it? And so um, that's what we're hoping. And now, Steve, I completely agree. We have, we have no expectation that we're going to succeed at being able to separate out these tapes. And it could be they're all fine. Well, what's funny is we, I, I have seen examples of, what you're calling self-termination failure, right? If if you put up, um, I'm, I'm not going to use their name, but there's some adhered membranes mm -hmm. that you can put on a wall and due to low angle shear, their own weight, they'll simply roll off the wall yeah. Yeah. over time because the adhesive just isn't strong enough to bear the weight of that material and it'll yep. basically curl off the wall. And if you leave it long enough, it'll curl you know, pretty heavily off the wall. But but even then, like the 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 two examples that I, I can remember walking up and seeing, it's I didn't know did the guy roll it? How well did he roll it? How yeah. well was it installed? Yeah, cleanliness of substrate. What, exactly. Yep, was everything. the substrate I mean, I go to some of these job sites, I mean sheathings it's got dust all over it. And they put it up, and these guys aren't carrying buckets of water and wet rags around yeah. when they're putting this on. So, and it's I'm not saying like you have to trust, but man, this is you, you, it's a it's not even a can of worms. This is like a barrel of worms. Well, and it's when when I was first doing the wingnut testing, you know, all the tests are seventy degrees Fahrenheit, you know, fifty percent relative humidity. All materials have acclimated for 24 hours, so they're the exact same temperature. Um, the the substrate is stainless steel polished. Yeah. It's been acid washed, and it's like, what the hell does that have to do with a job site? So what the real test there is, go out to a job site and try and find those conditions. 
Right. That's exactly. They probably don't exist. So that's exactly why we did the testing was how poorly can the conditions be before we get a significant decrease in adhesion? Am so I, I, you, you've hit it right on the head. We are, we are flying blind on this, but we feel as though it's worth an attempt to see if we can figure out. One of the things is when you, when you load a tape using the ASTM, I think it's D3654 or something. Um, there's the 180 peel, which means you apply the pressure at the top of the tape and zip it down. Um, there's a 90 uh, peel, which is pulling straight out from the tape. Yeah. And then there's an inline pull, which is a zero degree angle. And they all have different results. Um, which one of those would you use? And one of the ideas is maybe we just have the force adhere to the top eighth inch of a tape. So you, you, you test the holding power of just that top edge. Can we do that? Is it worth it? Does it, does it separate out tapes or not? Who knows? Yeah. But, but are, are you I, seeing tapes that need to be more self terminating than what they appear to be already? When I did some tape testing on, uh, two different types of, uh, you know, WRB po polymers laminated to the sheathing. Yeah. There definitely are tapes that are, have a lot less holding power with different, uh, different humidity contents of the substrate, um, different temperatures. Yeah. There's definitely better tapes and, and, um, not so good tapes. And are those findings published so that the people that are now panicked about one of their tapes well, they use regularly being a problem. These were written up on Green Building Advisor as W wingnut testing uh, stuff. And I caution by saying it's anecdotal. Sure. I mean, I'm not doing statistically significant. Um, well, it also kind of seems like so does the ASTM test. Well, like, so there's I one know. of the things. <clears throat> if if we could figure this out a bit more systematically, maybe it is something that would roll into a standardized test. But we don't we don't know. We've we've never had. WRB systems where we have the top edge of the horizontal tape being not weatherlapped. I mean, when we had sheet good systems in the past, we always weatherlapped them. Um, so, yeah, but that, no, I mean, the, they haven't always been weatherlapped because if we look at some of the, the older house wraps and their window details, right, where they sliced the little angle at the window head. When they put that back on, you put a piece of tape mm -hmm. and you yep. rely on that leading edge of the tape to stay in place. Yep. Right. And so the the interesting thing is like th this whole commentary, it's not targeted towards one manufacturer. It's anybody that makes a piece of tape in construction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whether you're a house wrap or an integrated weather resistive barrier or a flashing company or a sheet membrane company all of this applies yeah i think the difference is that the load right in a 45 on a short piece of tape at a window where the next you you can set it up so that there's something weather lapped over that cut right maybe um i mean a, a window on the first floor of a two-story wall is not going to have something above it at the head um that's a Quite a bit different than an eight foot or a sixteen foot stretch of tape that's just got that top edge exposed. Yeah, I mean, I know way. I'm playing devil's advocate here, but no, it's good because it's, we're, we're going to be I, working on I, this and exactly. I don't, yeah, I don't understand it. And I, it, yeah, I'd be amazed that where somebody thinks this can go. We'll stay, stay tuned. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like looking up at the sky and saying, okay, well, let's test that. Well, y clearly you've taken an approach that you think it's a waste of time to test, to try to, to test. I think it, I don't think it's a waste of time to, to get information. I think the, the boundary conditions of this are a hundred miles wide. Well, we'll try to narrow it down. All right. <laughs> cause, cause once you even solve for it, Pick a place in the country. Like, where do you test this? It's the same thing we did with the other tape testing. What about how do you control for temperature, moisture content of materials? It's all stuff that... Temperature the, of installation. Yeah. These are all things that are ignored by the ASTM tests right. that can be determinate. Because even if you said, well, we'll pick Boston or Minneapolis. Well, if I install it in August or November, it's two different installations yeah. that are significantly different. Yep. I totally agree. Okay. So I feel like I listened... 
for this entire podcast. I didn't contribute. You contributed uh, the whole oh, so I, like no, five so I, minutes. So I want to make sure that I do my part in contributing. Pete, what's the best type? <laughs> Ouch. The, for, our, for our listeners' the, sake, the one that, which the one's one the best one? You're going to love this. The, the one, one that self-terminates. <laughs> the one that's installed right. Okay. The one that's installed right. So, yeah. It's going to ride Did you hear what Steve said? Sorry, he was... He the said one the one that's, that's installed, installed correctly. correctly. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's going to boil down to be the biggest thing is that we either need to change the profile of the tapes. And I think that that's going to be prohibitively expensive. Happening. Or you you got to impress upon the crews. Like it's those long horizontal runs where you better be a Boy Scout. So then the, the challenge is, do we need tape rollers that are larger in diameter at the edges? Because then when you roll the tape there's better pressure on the, the I don't know. I mean, nobody right. seems to know that the tape we have now doesn't work. Well, or right. How, so I, I mean, think Steve, it's also how poorly can the conditions be where we still get for it's the still performance perform. we need? Yeah. Cause, because Cause rain screen siding with big overhangs, we're not having the same yeah. concern. Yeah. And I had not thought that if we are concerned about dwell time, dwell time in a wall, which is vertical, you know, you take a 312 roof, uh, the water's going to spend a lot more time at that leading edge, or it could. Roof promote that, I don't know if I, I, I think I told you, but back in, it had to be 19, probably late 90s, um, early 2000s. But we did a, we, well, we, I say we, but they did a house out in uh, west of Chicago with uh, the, the big heavy set bearded guy from uh, like, is it Lincoln Homes or whatever? I forget his name. He was a really cool guy. I think I can see him, but I can't yeah, remember Yeah, I can name. see him too. But anyways, yeah. they actually built the house. She did an XPS and didn't use any tape, right? We gave them a few details of flashing the horizontal or the vertical joints and horizontal or the vertical they left open. The horizontal joints has the XPS has that little tongue and groove. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we put it up and we did water testing. Surprisingly, the house didn't leak. So that that little well, it was water, like a back dam, water right? wants to find an edge. Yeah. And yeah. water wants to run down the edge. Yeah. So if before I like redesign the tape, if I was a tape manufacturer, I'd just say, listen, cut a minimum 30 degree angle on the top. And any water that comes down is going to find the edge and shed. I had not thought of that, but that's incredibly clever. Right. And maybe that's, maybe that's that's enough. Yeah. Well, I don't know. And if you're going all out, it's. Or do a little pointy hat. Cutting a a pointy hat on top of it because now the, the distance it has to travel. The problem with the pointy hat is is you have to hold it in the middle and cut it. The angle, you can just grab the tape and slice across. Yeah. So it's a little easier to make that cut. But yeah. So. These are some of the things that I probably thought I would never think of, but thank you. And once this podcast is over. But you know what? It's interesting (laughs) because you bring up studies. I was just recently read this study on um, drinking. Did you know drinking and and, and the the testing that's done for drunk drivers Mm. afterwards? Did you know the results are staggering? Yes. You know what? I'm so yes. glad that after that a rather a tense one. discussion, you ended it on a, a high note with a joke. <laughs> that was a high five. That wasn't a anybody hitting each other. Right. Uh okay, so are we gonna are we gonna say go to GBA for your resource then? Yeah, if you're interested in past tape, tape testing and you know, one of the reasons it's interesting, but it's nerdville. But if you listen to this podcast, one of the reasons we wanted to do this po- uh, one of the reasons I want to do this podcast is that People like Steve, who think a lot about, you know, geometry materials and their performance, we may get other suggestions about, you know, how to do better testing. Thank you, Steve. Do you want him to email you? No. Okay. (laughs) Questions at the Unbuild It. Like Ruben's email or something. (laughs) Questions at the Unbuild It podcast, and uh, I will forward them to Peter. (laughs) Uh, or to Ruben, if you need to get in touch with Ruben, you can send us a question and we'll send it to Ruben. That's what we do with our questions. There we go. (laughs) Uh, thank you for listening today, Peter. I thought it wasn't going to be worth our time, but it was. 
I was worried about the content on that one, and that was perfectly well, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to go as far as I, I'm only going to go as far as say it made conversation. I'm not going to say it made good conversation. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to say it made conversation. Okay. So. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the little button, smash the button, as Steve would say. Uh, leave us five star review. Tell a friend. We want to keep doing this. We want more people to hear it. That's why we do it. We like these conversations. We like sharing. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much.